we are doing class a little bit differently today for a couple of reasons. Um, one, with the change in the virus, we uh, as instructors now have to wear masks during class as well. And two, we have a guest speaker. Well, kind of tricky to have a guest speaker when he's got to cover his face. But it's really worthwhile in this case because as we started talking last week, we were talking a little bit more about careers in business and we're gonna kind of move into more, how do you build that pathway for your career? What, what are the tools you need? What are some of the skills you need to acquire? And in particular this morning, I want to address the subject of LinkedIn, which is basically, uh, hey, Transylvania, I think you guys have your mics open over there. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Um, and so in particular, one of the key school skills that we need to have is the ability to build and maintain an effective LinkedIn presence. And so our lead instructor for all things social media, and marketing, Jeff Levy has agreed to come over and help give us kind of a walkthrough tutorial of the best practices for managing, building and managing a LinkedIn presence. And so I'm gonna turn the class over to Jeff this morning and he'll be teaching primarily from the screen. You're actually gonna get a walkthrough on how to do this and we'll have a time for questions. You can ask questions during class but towards the end of this presentation, we'll have some time set aside as well. So you really should get a good handle on how do I make this happen if I don't have an effective LinkedIn presence already. So with that, Jeff, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Happy to be here. Good luck with those masks. All right, I'm gonna put on this very fashion forward helmet. Can you guys hear me okay? All right, is it a little better than mask? Sorta, of. okay. Um, I want to introduce myself. My name is Jeff Levy. I'm an instructor here. I teach marketing, finance, and management. Uh, I spent 30 years in corporate and left corporate as a senior executive and retired and started teaching. And, and one of the things I teach here is social media, and a great social media tool is LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is a little bit different than the normal social media you guys use. How many of you guys have a social media account? Everybody social media account? No, wow, the one person. LinkedIn's very much like the social media that you're used to using if you have social media accounts. In fact, it looks an awful lot like Facebook, Instagram, those social media, but it has a really, really different purpose. The purpose of LinkedIn is to build your professional brand. And what I mean by brand is who you are as a professional, what you represent and what value you add, and then a connection to all those people that are in your network professionally. So there's three things you can do on LinkedIn, and they have it right on the front page. You can search for a job, and I've used LinkedIn to search for jobs and found jobs through LinkedIn. Uh, you can create a network of professionals, uh, people that you've worked with, people that you wanna work with. If you're in sales, people you wanna reach out to and sell to, uh, but you can build a big personal network through LinkedIn, and I'll show you a bit what that looks like on my account. And the last is education learning a bit more about your trade or your craft uh, through posts that people put out on LinkedIn. And so the types of posts that people put on LinkedIn are really different than Facebook. So you guys have a Facebook account? When people post on Facebook, what kind of stuff do they put out there? Normally like family pictures, stuff like that. That's right, like family pictures, pictures of their, of their new kid, their dog, those kinds of things, all wonderful stuff. LinkedIn's really different in that that's not what you want to post. In fact, I'll show you some people who posted stuff like that this morning in my feed. Not the appropriate place for that. Posts in LinkedIn are really about you showing that you're an expert in a particular field and providing content to people that is useful and relevant to that field. Or to pass along information that somebody else has posted similarly that's useful from a business perspective. So that's, that's the use there. You don't want to post pictures of your puppy or complaints or those kinds of things on LinkedIn. So let me show you a bit what LinkedIn looks like and I'll show you how easy it is uh, to start an account because I don't want this to seem like it'd be really difficult. When you're on LinkedIn.com, you can go here and they talk about the things you can do here on LinkedIn. You can search for a job and they'll show employers, find a person you know, the networking, learn a new skill. 
And joining is very simple. You just click on join now. And I'll just go through just a couple steps because then it's going to start. Whoops. You put in an email, you pick a password, you agree to their terms and conditions because they always want that. You put in your name, click continue. Well, you'll see I'm already using the email address, but it would then take you to a verification, much like Facebook, where you go check your email, it gives you a link that verifies, and you're done. It's that simple. I would now have a LinkedIn account. I'll go ahead and log into mine so that I can show you a few things. So once you have your account, you'll go in and set up your profile, much like you would, again, in Facebook or other social media. But that profile looks different. It's not about who your family members are. It's not about your friends. It's about your professional experience, your education. And I'll walk through what you want to put in those, in those fields. And then the, the feed looks a lot like Facebook in that people make posts and it shows them a feed that you can scroll through here. So this looks a lot like Facebook from that perspective. But the posts are generally very business oriented. And when you post, you want to keep it very business oriented with discussion about those things that you're doing, your business is doing, or information that may be helpful to others in terms of uh, the expertise that you bring uh, to business. So a couple things about creating the profile. I wanted to give you some tips on that and what LinkedIn is all about. So starting with what is LinkedIn, it's an online professional community where you can connect to other prof professionals, demonstrate your expertise, search for a job, continue your education. Whoops. There's 660 million users in 200 countries. So it's really big. In fact, most of the people I've worked with, the most all of them, are on LinkedIn. And this is how I find out what they're currently doing. When I need somebody to, uh, for consulting help, or I'm looking for a job, or I'm looking to make a reference, LinkedIn's the first place I start because so many people are on it. It's easy to find people in your network that can help you with whatever it is that you're looking for. Half of college educated people are on LinkedIn, and if you look at the younger generations, those that are younger than baby boomers, it's really well more than half. It's nearly all of them that are college educated are on LinkedIn. And 30 million companies are on LinkedIn as well. And you'll want to connect to those companies that you're particularly interested in, whether you want a job at that company or that company has something that's interesting to you, or even if it's a competitor of the company you work for. I followed all my competitors on LinkedIn to see what they were up to, what they were posting, and were there ideas I could take from them or to find out what they were doing that I needed to understand. Creating accounts really easy. I just showed you that there's three steps, super simple. Uh, it's free, and with the free account, you can network, you can post, you can peruse other people's posts, or you can pay for an account. Uh, it's about $30 a month. That's called a premium account, and that's I used that when I was searching for a job. So if I knew I needed to go find a job, it allowed me to search for job postings to find people in my network or outside of my network that may work for that company that I could reach out to and say, I'm looking for a job in this company. Can you help me out? And they would often do that as a professional courtesy. Um, and then it also allows for uh, generating sales leads and also to hire. So if I was hiring somebody, I could post a job in LinkedIn and get candidates. But in order to do that, I had to have a premium account. And those premium accounts are a bit expensive. Most of what you guys would need to do on LinkedIn, you can do with a free account. It doesn't cost anything. So creating your profile. As you go through uh, the profile setup, there's a few things you want to keep in mind. Remember, this is a professional network. So you don't want to post the same types of things or create a file, a profile that looks like your Facebook account. It's really different use. So some of the mistakes I see people make, starting with the picture that you put on LinkedIn. And I took this from, uh, I, th I thought was a great site that showed 
the various mistakes people make, and I recognize them all, because I go look at employees or potential employees on LinkedIn before I would hire them. And the first is not putting a picture at all. So I go to their LinkedIn account, and they wouldn't have a picture, and you, make, you just wonder why, particularly if it's somebody you didn't know. You would wonder, why don't they have a picture? Why didn't they take the time to put a professional-looking picture out on their LinkedIn account? Second one is having your picture, but you're in a big group of people. Well, which person am I supposed to look at? I don't know who it is that I'm looking at here and why. What's the purpose of this picture? I don't get it. An old blurry thumbnail, not a good one. Again, why didn't you take the time to create something that looked good? And I'll give you some examples of good ones. Something I call the noob or the newbie. I got a picture of me in action somewhere. The other favorite is to a couple, but I broke up with my ex. I'm gonna crop them out and just use the picture of me because it was such a great picture of me. Well, I can tell that. Take the time to do a professional picture here when you start. The last is the comic, or the second to last is the comic. And then the worst, <laughs> which is, I'm out partying. I see people make this mistake all the time, and it's not just in LinkedIn. As you guys graduate and you start looking for jobs in the professional world, the first place a potential employer is gonna go check is LinkedIn, the second place is Facebook, Instagram, any of those other social media. And if this is what they see as your, as your profile picture, they're not gonna be as likely to hire you into a professional position. So be really thoughtful about the picture you use on LinkedIn as well as the rest of your social media because potential employers are checking those social media accounts. It's the first thing I used to go check. And if this is what I saw on the social media account, I wondered how serious are they about uh, being an employee for me. And I would be very hesitant to hire this person. So let me give you some examples. I'm gonna to toggle between this an actual LinkedIn. And I'm just gonna pick on a few of my friends and their accounts. So here's a great example of a good picture. My picture on LinkedIn is, is a little outdated. I have, a, I have a suit and tie on. People don't wear suit and ties in business much anymore. This is an old boss of mine, one of my, one of my favorite people. Great example of a good picture. Relatively generic background, he's dressed nicely, not overdressed, not underdressed, got a big smile on his face. Great, great example of a picture in LinkedIn. And that's what you wanna aim for. Another example, another one of my old bosses, he's now CEO of T-Mobile. He's got his T-Mobile gear on, got a big smile on his face. He's showing his brand and it's very professional looking. Good examples of what you want your profile picture to look like. So as you create your profile, the next thing they'll ask you for is a headline. And you want your headline to be informative. Here's another friend of mine from business. I thought had a great headline. Headlines, people expert, strategic leader in HR. She was head of HR for a company I worked for for a number of years put that expertise right in her headline. And as you set up the account, they're gonna ask first name, give me a picture, what's your headline, what's your bio, we'll go through each of those. This is a good example of a headline. S super simple, very easy, but it's clear what she does. It's clear she's an HR, is an HR professional, and if you're looking for HR expertise, she's a lady to talk to. Then right after the profile, LinkedIn will ask you uh, for something about you. So it's an about section. And she wrote a very nice short paragraph about her experience, what she's good at, what her interests are, and how she can help you. And this is a really nice example of that. She's got an extraordinary career in leading people and organizations to achieve what they otherwise might not have, especially in the people function. So it's clear she's about going and recruiting and building talent, that's, that's her aim. As you guys launch your career, you build your first profile in LinkedIn, keep it simple. What did you study? What is it you're interested in? What do you bring to the table? That's all you're trying to get across here. 
All right, the next section that uh, LinkedIn will have you fill out is the skill set. And so here's another friend of mine, he's the CIO at Windstream. And he chooses initially the skills that he brings to the table. And LinkedIn give you a list of skills. You can go in and choose the ones that, that you feel like you're, you're where you're strong. For him, it was telecommunication to manage services. And then you can ask people in your network to go, in, what's called endorse you for that skill. So if I have leadership as a skill in my, in my set, I can reach out to my network and say, please endorse me for this skill, leadership. People can also endorse you for skills that you don't have out there. So I had somebody, as an example, endorse me for a skill as software as a service. I didn't feel like I had the skill, so I didn't accept it because I didn't want to be disingenuous about what my skill set was. But in this case, managed services, telecom, are two of Stephen's skills, and people have endorsed him for those skills. You can see the endorsements here. The next section that LinkedIn will have you fill out is job experience. And it much looks a lot like your resume. In fact, mine, I copied and pasted for my resume right onto LinkedIn. So those job skills here that Dow shows, or sorry, those job experiences, probably look exactly like his resume. And if I flip over to my own account, just like my resume. So if I slip down here, here's all my experiences. My current business, my instructor experience here at the school, and then my last job in corporate where I ran marketing and product for Windstream, and so on. And this, this should match your resume. There's another place employers will go check is to make sure what you're putting out here matches what's on your resume uh, to see that the two align. And if they don't, it's gonna be a question mark in their mind. Why is that the case? All right, next section is education. Another friend of mine put in his education here. For you guys, it'll be Blue Ridge. Any other education you may have that's relevant, your high school education could be highly relevant to what you do here. You'd wanna put that in. Example here, I did the same uh, with mine, here's all my experience, and then my education uh, down here, and a section here for volunteering, skills and endorsements, we just went through. So I have a skill of strategy, product management, leadership. These are skills people have endorsed me for, and you'll wanna do the same over time. These are all my endorsements here. Pricing, business development, M&A, vendor management. All these are endorsements from, from others. So again, you can see that the feed looks a lot like Facebook in that people make posts and it shows up in your feed. And these are people in my network making posts. And I'm gonna pick on a few of them. So Jamie Mills, friend of mine, made a post about the uh, metallic monolith in, in, uh, in Utah that has disappeared. I wonder how that's relevant to his business experience. I'm sure it's very interesting. I might go read this but I wonder about the relevance of that to his professional experience and what he offers to me professionally. It's not the kind of uh, post I would make personally. There's nothing wrong with it, but I would say keep the post relevant to what it is that you do, and I'll show you some examples of that. You can see other posts from places like uh, Harvard Executive Education that are targeting me uh, to see if they can sell something to me. People that are doing volunteer work, and putting that out there, which I think is a great use. Here's an example of one that I think is quite useful. So this gentleman is the CEO at a robotics company. He's putting information out about something that's relevant to his business, to his expertise. He puts himself out there as an expert. It's information that's useful to others. They may go read this, and then the next time they think about uh, his type of business, they're gonna think of him as the expert there and reach out to him. This is another corporate um, advertisement. So if you guys manage social media at some point for a company like I did, uh, we would put these kind of posts out where they were useful to others uh, relative to needs they may have in telecommunications, the businesses I was in. And we would put it out as our business name. That's, that's how we would put it out. It wouldn't be under me, it would be under my business. But it's another way where you can use social media, not just to put out your own brand, but the brand you may represent as a marketer if that's what you do as a business. 
So these are some examples. I was going to show you. Mike Sievert is one of my old bosses. He's the CEO of T-Mobile now. He puts out a lot of posts, and I was going to show you his activity because they use they use um, LinkedIn and social media extensively. I think they were one of the best companies at social media in the business. And he puts out posts that are interesting and people want to follow because it'll show either he'll like something that somebody else put out, uh, in this case the chief communication officer at TMO, talking about something they're doing with Microsoft. He'll put out new product announcements. Um, they, he often will put out uh, promotional activity, uh, things that he's doing in the company, things that other people have done in the company. But it's highly relevant and interesting information uh, for something relative to T-Mobile, the brand he represents. But it also helps build his own personal brand because people now see him as the expert in telecom and in those items that he's posting. So some of the areas, the other areas you'll find on the site itself, the home is your feed. My network shows all the people I have, as an example, 1,447 people in my network. And I could go search this network or accept people are asking me to become part of their network. But I can search this network really helpful. For example, if I'm looking for a new employee or I'm looking for an expertise, I can go out here and do a search and look for people who live in a certain geography, maybe have a certain background, went to a certain school, whatever the case is, I can search that in my network, uh, which is quite useful. A job section, so I told you one of the three key things you can do in LinkedIn is go find jobs. Here are job listings. Uh, this and Indeed are probably the two biggest job posting sites. You guys ever heard of Indeed? Yep, good, okay. Messaging, you can message others that are in your network. And then notifications, just like Facebook, if somebody posts something that may be of interest to you, uh, you can see that in the notifications. So the, again, the layout looks a lot like Facebook if you use that in the past. That's it, that's, uh, that's LinkedIn. Any questions about it? It's not so much about the actual format, but uh, I guess just uh, like, could you just give some advice about if I'm starting a career, at what point would it be best for me to like establish a LinkedIn account? Absolutely, I'd say right away. Right away. It's a great resource for finding a job and for putting out there what you do, what you represent, your background, whether it's just education, whether it's previous job experience, doesn't matter. I think starting that uh, LinkedIn page uh, so people can go see you and as importantly as you meet people professionally, begin connecting with them on LinkedIn and it'll remind them about you and they'll remember you because they'll see you show up in their network. And uh, as you make those connections, your feed will start to fill in with relevant information. What, at one point, I was looking for a, a job many years ago, and I went and looked at the job site on LinkedIn, but I also looked at the feed from potential employers. What are they doing? What's going on in their business? And it allowed me to, one, find jobs on the job site, but two, to see what's going on with that business. And I couldn't have done that without establishing the account right up front. And you could do the same. I'd say start right away. Good question. Any questions in Brevard? Would it be okay if I agree something out? Yeah. Um, describe the value of networking. Is networking, uh, I, I mean, it seems like cynically strategic at one level mm -hmm. while you make friends because, oh, because it's going to help you down the road. But this is like high end networking. Did, can, can you give a little backstory on, on using the value in that? Yeah. I'll give you three quick instances of where networking is valuable. So I've got you know, 14, over 1,400 people in my network. Three instances where I'll use it. If I'm looking for a job, I'll look for people that work for the company that I want to go work for and ask them, can you help me get to the right people in, in this company? And that's appropriate? Absolutely. Do it all the time. People do ask me the same question. Uh, can you help me get in with Windstream, the last company I worked for? Here's what I want to do. Sure, I'll help you connect to the right people. Uh, they wouldn't have had access to those people otherwise. Second is I'm looking for somebody to hire. So now I'm the hiring manager. It works the other way. I can look through my network 
and people who are secondary to my network, meaning they're connected to people that are connected to me, but not directly connected to me. And I can look for specific job skills, background, education, whatever it is that I need in that role, and I'll message them directly. And I have stolen away from my competitors, some of their best employees, <laughs> By doing this, I'll have a role that I know is a great role. I want somebody from a competitor. I'll reach out to them directly, offer to, to, uh, to uh, give them a, a job interview, and bring them in, and we'll take a steal them away. I've done that many times. A third is if I'm looking for expertise. So as an example, I need advice on a particular um, business issue, or I need a consultant, or I need uh, help in some way, I can go through my network and look for background that is relevant to that business issue and reach out to those people and ask them for advice. If they're in my network, they're probably a friend of mine and they give me some, some free advice. If they're in consulting, which many people in my network are, I, I could reach out to them and say, is this a consulting engagement you could help me with? And I've had people reach out to me uh, similarly. In fact, they reach out to me pretty frequently and pay me uh, for a couple hour consulting gig and they find me through LinkedIn and the networking and say, hey, we're looking at buying a telecom company. Can you tell us a bit about the company? We'll pay you for two hours of work and they give me a consulting fee. It works both directions. Uh, so that network is really important. Finding jobs, finding good people when you've got to fill a job and then finding help when you've got a business issue uh, that you're having trouble resolving. And if you leverage that network, particularly in that last one, uh, if you've got a strong network there and you leverage it, um, it only makes you smarter because you can now solve an issue you wouldn't have been able to solve otherwise. One question I, I would have is once we get this set up and we're engaged and it could be any matter of time down the road, what's the best way to keep up with best practices? Because these things often do kind of change and tweak a little bit. And where, where do you go to stay on top of that? Two places I go. One is right on LinkedIn. So let me see if I can quickly find it on here. On LinkedIn, they'll give you uh, helpful hints. And I'm looking just to see where that is in here. Yeah, Help Center right here. Uh, you can go into LinkedIn and they'll do tutorials. They'll talk about best practices, uh, the way they see people leveraging the platform. So LinkedIn is a great source for that. You can even do a Google search for LinkedIn uh, best practices, that type of thing. The other is I go, the second one is I'll go and look and see how people in my network, people I particularly admire, like the people I've been showing you today, how do they use it? And even as I prepped to, to have this discussion, I saw things that they were doing that I hadn't done, and I went and updated my, my LinkedIn based on things that I saw them doing that, that I simply hadn't taken care of. The third is uh, YouTube, which is kind of the, one of the greatest tools for how to <laughs> ever develop and go and find people uh, that are HR directors, that are management uh, development folks, people with a strong background in HR type items and, and have, uh, and look at their uh, YouTube uh, videos about how to best leverage LinkedIn, how to best manage your profile, what to post and not to post. And I'll watch two or three of them because sometimes they have different advice. Some of it I don't agree with, but most of it is quite helpful but if you watch two or three, you can sort of triangulate on these seem to be the best practices that I need to be thinking about. Those are, I think, the three best sources. I have a question. Questions? I have a question. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah. Um, I have a LinkedIn account already. Should I be going in there like every time I finish a class and adding that skill? Or do I wait till I graduate and then add all the skills? If you're looking for a job, I would have your skills as updated as possible on LinkedIn. If you are not looking for a job currently, I'd wait till I graduate rather than adding them one at a time as you go. It, it really, I, I would say, is a matter of whether or not you're le looking to leverage LinkedIn to find that next role or um, to put yourself as an expert for somebody who would hire you for some reason. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Um, Jeff, one last question. Yes, sir. On, um, on transitioning from one career type to another, 
Um, do you have suggestions on, do you start to build the site for what you want it to become, or do you kind of wait and transfer uh, into that world and then change it? What would you do if you were somebody in one particular gear getting ready to or already practically changing? Yeah, I think that's a great question. One thing I wouldn't do is lose your history. Like you, you've built a skill set, you've done a bunch of work, you have th this portfolio of work that you've done. Don't lose that. It's still valuable. Now, if I'm looking to change careers, let's say I was in telecom all those years, now all of a sudden I want to go into software development, I do need to start thinking about how do I pitch myself as a software developer or as a fireman or a policeman or whatever it is that it is that I want to go do that's different than what I've done in the past. And so find those common skills from what you've done to what you want to go do and begin pitching those as your core skill set so that people put you in their consideration set for that next role. Um, because it is hard to transition sometimes from one to the other, but you can often find that the skill sets overlap and those are the areas you want to focus on where they overlap and you've got history, education, experience in those areas that are relevant to that direction you're heading. Does one put their LinkedIn address on their resume or how do they share that? I do, I put, I've got it on my resume. Um, what about a, a person who's, who's young who doesn't have much of a resume? Absolutely. I, I would absolutely put it on a resume. And I put it up at the top, so I've got my name, phone number, address, and then I'll have social media on there, uh, which will include LinkedIn. I don't put Facebook, Instagram, those things. Although I expect the employer's going to go look at them, because <laughs> they do, I promise you. Uh, but I will put my LinkedIn there, because it is professional, professional network. Absolutely.